My good friends at CK Worldwide hooked me up with the brand new MT200 ACDC TIG machine. Here it is in the box. I'm excited to get it open and uh, get it set up. Hey guys, Jim Watson, AKA Joe Welder. Welcome to ArcZone's video channel. It comes well packaged, nice box. And it's loaded with goodies inside. Okay, so here's the machine. It's nice and light. It's got a heavy duty handle on the front. I'm gonna take it over here and put it on my cart. Fits perfectly, and I'll begin the setup from there. All right, guys, so I got everything out on the workbench here and uh, got the instructions and operations guide, the warranty information card, pretty comprehensive. Not sure what's in here. Let's open this up and check it out. All right, so it looks like a flow meter regulator and some argon hose fittings. So there's the standard argon flow meter, again with a uh, B-style nut and a quarter inch hose barb fitting. So you can put your own gas hose on there if you need to. There's also a, uh, the work lead clamp with the DENS plug on one end and a small crock jaw spring clamp on the other. Looks like it's probably three meters or 12 and a half feet. Also, there is a uh, converter cable from a 110 volt plug-in to the large three-prong 220 volt. And it looks like in here is the torch package that comes with the unit. Looks like a CK-17. So you get the torch with the connector cable, the connector and the cable. And it looks like you get a gas hose as well. So you can either make your own gas hose if this one doesn't work, or you can uh, use the standard one right out of the box. Also in the box comes this nice uh, TIG accessory kit and all the reorder information. Let's open this up and see what's in here. Okay, so this looks like the remote amperage control and the control lead. So it looks like uh, at least a 12 and a half foot lead on that baby. Now it's a pretty large looking pedal, but it's actually nice and light. So that's exciting. All right guys, so got the uh, CKMT200 ACDC TIG machine out of the box. Got it on my welding cart, got the cylinder mounted, and I'm at the back of the machine now. I wanna talk a little bit about the power requirements. The machine comes standard with a six foot long, three prong, 30 to 50 amp plug for 220 volt. It also comes with a three foot, nine inch long whip connector that converts the three plug, three prong plug to a 110, 115 volt. Okay, so it doesn't matter what your power requirements are, you can hook the machine up. Okay, so now we're gonna hook up the flow meter regulator to the uh, argon cylinder and you wanna make sure when you get your bottle from your gas supplier that you get argon, not an argon CO2 mix and uh, make sure it's a good clean bottle. I like clean bottles. This one's a nice one here that I got from my local gas supplier. I'm gonna take the cap off. Set that down. And uh, the unit comes sealed, so we're gonna break that seal off. And then hook up the flow meter regulator. All right, so on the back of the machine, there is a uh, inlet connector for a B-size connector. And B is the CGA, the Compressed Gas Association standard size nut for argon. It's a 5 8 18 right hand thread. And on the flow meter regulator that came from CK, um, you get a gas hose and it came with an optional, you know, fitting assembly so you can uh, build your own hose. Um, I would not, however, use green hose, um, which is airline hose. I would get a high quality uh, PVC plastic hose for my argon. 
Okay, so as I said, the unit comes with the flow meter regulator. I'm gonna thread that into the back of the cylinder here. And you wanna have the cylinder situated to where the valve is, if you're facing the back of the machine, on the right-hand side. So when you're looking at the front of the machine, the flow meter regulator is clearly visible on the left, okay? And uh, just use a standard wrench to tighten that. Okay, got that. And as I mentioned, the, the machine right out of the box comes with the pre-made six foot long hose with the uh, B size fittings on both ends. So one of those is gonna go right into the flow meter regulator and the other is gonna go into the back of the machine. Now, I like my machine set up on the center of the cart, nice and tidy. And uh, the only thing that I've noticed about this is the fitting for the connection is right dead center on the back of the cart. So you can either slide the machine over to the right, which again, there's a little bit of an interference here with the power cord coming out of the machine. So you can see how the cylinders rocked. If you want to make that connection, alternatively, you can get a 90 degree elbow to thread into the back of the machine and it gives you a, a 90 degree takeoff point for the argon connection. And that's how I'm going to set mine up because again, I like my machine centered on the cart. So as you can see here, I got a nice brass 90 degree elbow. It's available on arczone.com. It's a WES-407 is the part number. And uh, that will work on any TIG machine. And what you need is a standard 5 8 inch end wrench to tighten the machine connections. And again, these are you know high quality compressed gas fittings, so you don't have to really power down on them. Just tighten them up, get a nice, nice seal. And then once you crack the valve and you do your pre-test uh, for your machine, you want to go through and soap all these fittings, all these connections with soapy water, just dish water, and uh, or dish, dish soap and water, and uh, check to see if there's any uh, bubbles or leaks. Okay, definitely want to do that before you start welding. So you can see right here, we got a bubble going, and look in here. So that is definitely not tight. Let me go ahead and tighten this up, and it, you know, depending upon the connection, you may want to double wrench it. But uh, for now, I'm just gonna tighten this up. Okay, so here I am at the front of the machine. I wanna make the uh, DINs work lead connection. And it comes with a 12 and a half foot cable with a 200 amp croc style spring clamp, okay? Simply plug that in. And uh, rotate it to lock it in position. Mount that to the workbench and be ready to go. Now it's time to hook up the uh, remote foot control and you can see the foot control here. It's a, a rather large package, but it uh, happens to be very light. You can see I'm holding it with one hand. So I'm gonna put that down on the floor. It comes with a 25 foot lead assembly and a uh, Amphenol style plug. And on the plug, it's a five pin circular plug and on the plug there's a little notch. There's a corresponding notch on the top of the female receptacle. So I'm just gonna line those up Put that in and then tighten down this collar connector. Okay, so we're going to complete the connection now. We're going to put the uh, CK17 flex head torch with a 12 and a half foot super flex cable and the DINs connector. Now this comes in the kit and uh, it also comes with a handy little AK3 accessory kit. It's a very basic accessory kit, but it's enough to get you going. And what I found was got a little mechanical interference problem. You can see that the connector will not go into the machine straight um, because of the handle on the cart. So this is something you need to keep in mind. When you select a cart to mount your machine, it's probably better to go with a little bit larger cart to make sure you have plenty of clearance in that for the back of the machine, as we showed you with the 90 degree connector, and with the front of the machine where the DINs plug will not go straight in. I'm gonna to have to improvise. So I've just removed the handle and I've got a fab shop here so I can modify that later. So it's pretty simple. Insert it and rotate it to where it stops. 
the argon connection goes right into the face of the machine. And again, you need a uh, five, or check that, 11 sixteenths uh, open end wrench. And I'm going to make that connection. Okay. Now, technically, you should double wrench that, but for uh, purposes of the video, I'm just single wrenching. Okay, so I've got the CK17 flex torch, and uh, it comes with the insulator and a long back cap right out of the box. I've opened the accessory kit, and I've got the uh, 332nd 2.4 millimeter collet and collet body, and that's what I'd recommend you start with a good general purpose size for TIG welding to get started. Three, electrode size is 332nd or 2.4 millimeter. That simply just threads right into the front of the torch. You want to make sure that the cap is unscrewed just to where you can see the top of the O ring, and that will allow the front end parts to, to tighten up. And again, these are just hand tight. There's a little knurl on the side, just thread that by hand. And I would select the number six, which is six sixteenths of an inch or three eighths, and uh, mount that right. Just screw that on. And then next thing you do is uh, select a tungsten electrode and point it. Okay, so I've got a uh, piece of 332nd or 2.4 millimeter tungsten, and you can see I've ground a nice tapered uh, tip on that. And uh, I prefer to put the tungsten in through the back of the, tung of the torch body so as not to scrape the paint off the identification tape, off a paint off the back of the electrode okay and get that paint lodged inside the torch body which when you start welding it will come out through the gas flow so preferably insert the tungsten through the back take the cap loose insert the tungsten and then position it about a quarter inch 5 16 stick out and just snug the cap up and you should be ready to tig weld all right, so yeah, that was interesting. I uh, set the torch up, it was at the workbench, and man, there was all kinds of strange stuff happening. Thought we had bad argon flow, I tested everything, still no luck. Check it out, I hooked the torch up backwards. I put the uh, torch into the uh, positive side of the machine, which is the work lead, and the work lead into the negative side of the machine, which is the TIG torch. On all my machines, the blue machines, Miller machines, the uh, TIG torch is on the right, work leads on the left. I guess it helps if you pay attention to the little icons on here that show the TIG torch. Let's switch this over. We might have to redo the whole video. I'm not sure I want to show that, but there you go. That's the proper connection. Let's see how it works. All right, guys, so here I am at the workbench. Got everything all set up with the new CKMT200 ACDC TIG machine. I got my little coupon set up. I'm going to strike an arc and see how this baby runs. Starts really nice and crisp. And it's working great. So that's the introductory video, how to unpack and set up the new CKMT200 ACDC TIG machine. In the next video, we're going to show you the detailed operations of all the functionality of the machine. Be sure to subscribe to ArcZone's YouTube channel to stay up to date on tricks of the trade, industry news, and the latest tools and trends. ArcZone delivers a complete line of welding accessories and we service what we sell. Give us a call if you have a question or want to talk to a live human who can help you weld like a pro. For your convenience, you can shop our entire product line at arc-zone.com. You can also find us on Amazon and eBay. If you prefer, you can order from your local supplier and we'll drop ship directly to you. Thanks for watching and good welding.